Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. In this video, we are gonna be forging a blank that I sell over at my website, blacksmithpdfs.com. You can find a link to that in the description down below. And then I will also have Jessica at some point add a little card uh, that you can click on. That's a direct link to take you over to our website if you have any interest in purchasing one of these blanks from us. So let's get right into the video. Okay, the blank that we're gonna be forging today is the Hooktail Ladle Blank Kit. So you can get this in several different options. You can get it as just the ladle itself, the ladle body, the circle portion, so you can forge your own handle, or you can actually buy this as a kit, and this is called the Hooktail Kit uh, for this. You will come, it will come with two rivets, a ladle blank, and a handle blank all together. So this way, all you have to do is form the various pieces and assemble it, and you're good to go. So the first step that we're gonna work on is we're actually gonna work on the handle first and foremost. So let's get that started now. So the very first step I like to do is I actually like to forge the sides of this piece of the handle material. So I'll do that first over the horn. As you do that, it's going to want to cup a little bit on you. You will have to dress that at some point. But I like to forge that first, get those edges forged down a little bit. That's kind of nice at this stage because you can also round them over slightly so they're less sharp. All right, we'll straighten this up. This actually does a couple things for you. This not only lengthens the handle slightly, which can be nice, but it also cleans up the appearance, gives it more of an overall forged look. Clearly we are forging it, but instead of forging down from a giant piece of bar stock or a big, a big flat piece of bar stock, we're already starting with a flat that's already to shape. And uh, so it has a little bit of a different look Comparatively, if you were to forge your own handle from, say, a piece of quarter by one flat, uh, it will have a different look on the whole piece. Again, that's up to you to decide what works best for you and your shop. So there we go. We've forged those edges down a little bit. Now we're going to get this hot again, and I'm going to forge on the edges again, but that's just to put a little bit of curvature in it. Now I've, I've made a videos, I've made two videos already, one on a regular spatula or a classic handle style for spatula and a classic handle style for a ladle kit. And in those videos, we ball peen textured this. In this case, I'm actually gonna leave this plain. I just want that little bit of light hammer work forge scale look to it. I don't actually wanna texture this. You could do whatever type of texture you would like uh, that seems to fit you the best. But for me, for my purposes right now, I'm actually just going to leave it a basic or a plain look. Okay, I'm gonna start off by encouraging that cupping a little bit more by hammering it down into the step of my anvil with a transition place in between the horn and the body of the anvil. So I'm going to start encouraging that cupping action and then I'm going to finish up by hammering over the horn to help squat that cupping action down a little bit better and to give it some more reason to take and curl. Just like so. And again, I find that the curvature aspect of this, giving it a little bit of curve to it, really helps in the comfort of this piece. Um, it, it really, really does. So now I'll come up on top, we'll straighten this out and even up any curvature I had, any wonkiness. Straighten that out a little bit. Went a little too far. That curvature a little bit better. Better, good. And that's what we're after. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna encourage this thing over this way. 
just like we're putting the rat's tail on the end of something. I'm going to flatten it, make sure we keep it in line here, back here, and then tuck it back in. Dropping it once just helps to let everybody know you're still alive. <laughs> oh, that you're still human. So there we go. We create a little curl tail there. And now we're just going to bend that over and bend it back towards itself. Again, bend it back and adjust this to whichever way suits you best for whatever curvature you like. So there you go. There's your little basic hook tail right on the end. Okay, so before we begin sinking this into the swedge block, I want to make a real quick note, and I've pointed this out in a ton of different videos in the past. It is not necessary for you to have a swedge block like mine in order to take and make ladles or bowls or anything of that sort. In fact, I use wood stumps all the time with depressions to make different things. I happen to have a swedge block that has ladle depressions in it, so that makes it quick and easy on my part. And certainly if you want to do this for a living and you want to make a bunch of ladles and things, I suggest you get a nice swedge block uh, to do that. It just makes the world a lot easier. Now obviously you can do this in a cupping tool. I have a video to that. It'll, you can find that linked up in the description down below. I have a video for one of those, and I also have a video on how you can make a carved out uh, depression in a stump and make a, a wooden swedge as well. That will also be linked down in the description down below. So take advantage of those resources. But for this time, we're actually going to use this swedge block because that makes it easier on me. Again, that is not a prerequisite though. You do not have to have that. It's not all or nothing when it comes to that. Just keep that in mind. So we've got our blank good and hot. We're gonna go over to the larger depression first and we're gonna sink this. Now that I've got that sink through the first stage, I can go to the second stage. Now you may not want a very deep spoon or ladle. If you want a deeper one, you can always go into a deeper block. Or if you're working over a cupping tool, just continue to sink it deeper. I want a deeper one, however, so, so I'm gonna take the time to forge it down into the deeper block. And we will go get this hot again. Got our piece nice and hot, and down we sink. Now I should also point out at this point in time that this hammer that I'm using has a nice radius face to it, a really nice round face. You'll want to do the same for whatever sinking hammers you make. Just take a regular ball peen hammer and grind the face more round on the, uh, this end, different pitches. In fact, that's one of my favorite things to do with ball peen hammers is grind them to different pitches in radiuses. Grind them to different pitches and radiuses so this way I can better adjust to curvatures that I have. All right. And there you have it. Okay, so here we are. We have our hook tail handle. We've drilled the holes on them. I have center punched marked them in about a quarter inch in from each edge, kind of triangulating there. And then I center punched marked it on the corner of that. So this way it'll leave about an eighth inch 
all the way around for a quarter inch rivet. Once the head goes through, it's left a nice, uh, nice amount of meat around the hole. That's the only important measurement there. So now the next stage, as I've said before, my method that I like to use is I like to clamp, drill one hole. I like to drill one hole first, get it riveted up, then come back, drill the second hole, and then rivet it up. So I will go ahead and clamp this up, drill it, and then we will go over and we'll get this riveted up. Okay, so I've got this second hole drilled. I'm gonna put the rivet through. Hopefully easy peasy through the first part. And now I'm gonna hold this on the horn of the anvil. Again, and we're gonna rivet this down. Go to the, our old one. Finish pinning that right on down, and there you have it. One nice hook tail ladle. Just as simple as that. Now, say if you don't like the looks of this here, say this is too steep for you, and you want it to be a little shallower, you can always adjust that by heating this up again while it's riveted, and just bending on this slowly. Just aim your heat somewhere in here, and just bend it out like that. Um, to make it more appropriate to the pitch that you are getting after. But of course, with these riveted joints, um, you might have to snug the rivets up again after that if you do any sort of last minute adjustments. So now that brings us to the finish. What type of finish do we do with this? As I've said in the other videos that I have done on ladles and things of that nature, if it's to be used with cooking, I like to season it like cast iron. So I will rub it down with a food safe oil and then put it in the oven and let it cook at about you know 500 550 uh, if your oven goes that high or if you have a very broil set setting turn it up to high very broil and let that kind of smoke as soon as it starts smoking off you can pull it out and it's done and it's basically seasoned so you can season it just like cast iron cookware um, for your customers now you could also leave this raw for yourself or for your customers you can leave this completely raw and then let them do that themselves and make that choice for themselves, uh, which may be a safer alternative if uh, someone may have some food allergies. Um, it's a good thing to state in your listing nonetheless. So there you go. That's a hook tail ladle. Um, you can, again, you can find this kit over at our web website, blacksmithpdfs.com, along with the spatula. Whoop. Ruins the sales pitch. <laughs> Anyways, along with the spatula, you can find that over there. You can also find skillet blinks and things of that nature as well to make basically an entire cook set. Uh, can't ask for better for that. So that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.